Do you believe in life after climate change? One of the hottest subjects being addressed in the world today is the deterioration in climate change due to global warming caused by increasing greenhouse gases, carbon emissions in the atmosphere, primarily as a result of global human activity. There are many vocal skeptics who dispute the science, suggesting that climate change is a naturally occurring event and has very little to do with human activity and just a pile of political hot air. This issue is frequently exacerbated by politicians themselves due to their other destructive political agendas, typically promoted by the far left woke brigade. However, the science is undisputedly clear that human industrial activity over the past 50 years or so has without any doubt exponentially accelerated the growth in damaging climate change greenhouse gases, which is causing more frequent serious life-threatening weather events all around the world. Now, step in politicians who have signed a legally binding Paris Agreement to reduce the global carbon footprint and save the world. Unfortunately, many politicians are biased in their methods to achieve carbon neutrality due to their other divisive, far-left, woke agendas and cause great confusion in the minds of the general public. In New Zealand, our politicians push heavily for the reduction in livestock carbon-based gas emissions by trying to force farmers to pay an emissions tax and push people away from driving fossil fuel vehicles by providing financial incentives to purchase battery-powered electric vehicles instead. Government legislation was also introduced to ensure a certain portion of fossil fuel mixture sold contained biofuel to help reduce the carbon footprint. But there are some very serious issues regarding climate change that our politicians refuse to address and open up for public discussion and debate. As a result, many people are confused and not supportive of government measures to reduce the global carbon footprint. Perhaps the general public would be more conducive to the political solutions if politicians were more honest and informative in the first place. Take New Zealand for instance. The country contributes considerably less than 0.2% to overall global greenhouse gas emissions. So regardless of what action the country takes to mitigate carbon emissions into the atmosphere, it will have absolutely no impact on global climate change whatsoever. And serious weather events like the recent cyclone Gabrielle will continue on to batter New Zealand regardless, every few years or so. Our politicians would be much better to concentrate on adaptation strategies rather than pie-in-the-sky ideas and solutions. Why pie-in-the-sky? There is plenty of supporting evidence, use Google, to suggest that overall damage to human beings caused by biofuel production will ultimately be worse than carbon emissions damage due to reduced food production and resultant death by starvation. Likewise, battery-powered electric vehicles may well also prove to be more detrimental to the planet than fossil fuels due to a wide range of factors such as mining, child abuse, slave labour, fire hazard and a whole raft of other negative concerns. Google has endless data on this. Finally, taxing or punishing New Zealand farmers for livestock emissions is political ignorance, apart from the fact that such action will also push food prices even higher and make no difference to net global emissions. However, all of this is just the tip of the melting iceberg. There are many other very serious concerns and questions that politicians need to answer and honestly and openly discuss with the general public if they genuinely wish to resolve climate change successfully. For example, politicians, please explain. Concern 1. The top polluters in the world are China, the USA, India and Russia who account for well over 60% of all global greenhouse gases collectively, compared to New Zealand's 0.2% contribution. If New Zealand disappeared off the face of the map tomorrow, it would make absolutely no difference to global climate change whatsoever. Explain why New Zealand has a carbon neutral goal of year 2025, some two years away, yet China, who is the biggest polluter by far, with over 30%, has a goal of year 2060, nearly 40 years away. Concern 2. India and China, two of the top three polluters in the world, are classed as developing nations and as such New Zealand has to pay into a climate change reparation fund, punishment fines, to assist such developing countries. Last year New Zealand paid out 20 million into this fund which was deemed insufficient. China on the other hand does not have to pay a single cent, not a brass razoo to anyone for their pollution because they're a developing nation. 
China is a country with a space station, huge military machine, has hosted two Olympic Games, getting ready to invade Taiwan, and has an open objective to be the world's number one military and economic power by the year 2030, yet is classed as a developing nation which little New Zealand, a 0.2% polluter, has to support. Please explain. Concern 3. Very wealthy people, nice people like Bill Gates and John Kerry, for example, fly around the world in their private gas-guzzling, grossly polluting luxury jet aeroplanes, preaching to the world how we should live and reduce our carbon footprint in order to save the planet from the ravages of climate change. They justify their action as necessary to spread their message, but additionally, they also explain how they use their wealth to mitigate their own huge polluting carbon footprint by other means. Please explain why ordinary people are not encouraged to do the same thing. Drive around in their existing fossil fuel cars, but offset any pollution by planting a few extra green bushy shrubs in their garden. Or maybe farmers could plant some trees, rather than being degraded and punished by emissions tax. Concern 4. I have included a few charts after this speech which clearly highlight and support the science that humans have undoubtedly been responsible for an exceptional and accelerating growth in global greenhouse gas emissions, especially over the past industrial 50 years or so. The charts also clearly show that in near-perfect tandem, there has been a similar exponential growth in human population. I may be wrong, but I assume that the growth in global population has not been caused by the growth in greenhouse gases. But the opposite is true, that the growth in human population has directly caused the growth in greenhouse gases. Please explain why politicians never address the issue that the world has too many people, and by reducing the global population instead, this will automatically reduce global greenhouse gas emissions. Concern 5. Three of the top four polluters, China, the USA and Russia, are always threatening and or talking about a pending nuclear war. World War III seems to be imminent on the extinction clock and people all around the world live in growing fear of a devastating war every day. The world is not at peace. They are closer to extinction by nuclear war than at any time in history. Explain why people should care about climate change if they genuinely fear that World War III is just around the corner and life for them may well be over at the click of their fingers in the near future. Or perhaps explain why war is just political sabre-rattling, will never happen, and climate change is a real political game. Thank you for listening. Wangari Tim.